and gentlemen, you are back with another craft beer review from the Kissing Cousins. I am Skinny Jeans. I'm Tad the Tank. You should already know our social media, but just in case you don't, check out our Facebook page, which is probably where you found the link to this to our YouTube, Off the Tap Instagram, Off the Tap 2018. Super cool stuff going on there. Maddie Ice is posting stuff on there. Whenever I can convince Tad and Austin to post shit on there, they're posting their beers on there. I'm trying to keep everyone posted with like what we have going on, aside from the reviews we do, what other beers that we're drinking that we don't actually review, and there's some pretty sweet stuff on there, so make sure you check that out. That's Off The Tap 2018, like I said, untapped in Twitter, Off The Tap 2. Matty Ice is uh, going to be helping us out, get that untapped going a little bit more, and keep updated with what we've already reviewed, maybe give you guys like a group. A brief description. <laughs> a brief yeah, description. A brief and our email. Come on, everybody. You got to come up with some sort of ideas for us to do. Well, we're not. I mean, we're not opposed to doing ridiculous shit. Reviewing things somewhere. Actually, we have some reviews coming out that some pretty cool places that we've been to, and uh, all of our craft beer foods, all of our craft beer cocktails. With this whole COVID stuff going on, it's been a little difficult to try to get together and pump some of that content out, but. I mean, if you have any suggestions or anything, or you want to send us beer, or even sponsor us, hit us up on our email, off the tap, gb2018 at gmail.com. I feel like I could have just uh, worded all of that way quicker, made it way more simple, <laughs> but you know what? Here we are. It doesn't matter. You're already watching. You're interested in the beer. We've got Half Acre Tome, which is their Hazy Pale Ale. This just dropped in the last year. Actually, I would say the last six to eight months it just dropped, so... Hell yeah. We'll get into detail after you hit that subscribe button. Yeah. Go away. Go, go hit that subscribe button on the YouTube. We'll Make here. sure you hit the bell, too, so that you get notifications. Anytime our dumbasses put out another video, you're like, oh, Kissing Cousins are back at it again. Let's get it going, you know, Cousy? But for now, we'll wait in silence until you do it. <laughs> We're just kidding. Let's get at it. <laughs> I'm ready to drink some beer. All right. So, Half Acre, man. They brewed their first beer, which was a lager, in 2006. They opened their doors with a brand new facility in 2007. Um, I just can't believe that it's so difficult to find information on all of these places. You know, it's it sucks. I don't like resorting to Wikipedia, but like when we have to resort to Wikipedia for information, we're getting desperate. Dude, but that's 100 percent truth on that website. <laughs> yeah, 1,000 percent truth. But in 2017, they pumped out 43,000 barrels. So I don't know how big of a tap system do you think that is. Or barrel system. system. Yeah. How many did they pump out? 43,000. 43,000? 43, and it depends on how much they're brewing, honestly. Yeah. You could have a 15 barrel system and still get that if you're brewing constantly. Right, right, you right. have something right. smaller as long as you keep production moving. Right. So it, honestly, it doesn't say much about how big their system is. They have two locations in the Chicago area. And originally, when they started brewing, they were contract brewing from a place in Wisconsin. So, I mean, there Chicago goes again. Can't do anything without us. <laughs> I'm just playing. They're fully sustainable. <laughs> They're fully sustainable in the Chicago area right now. And I, I might have a little insight on on the industry. And I I've recently found out that Bodum has taken over their number one, like most selling beer recently, over their Daisy Cutter, which both beers I've, I've told you Bodum is like my favorite go to IPA. I mean, it is fantastic. So this, I mean, I'm excited for this. But uh, the one thing that was really cool that I found out was like a little bit of sustainability is they actually challenged some of the students in engineering for, from Northwestern University, which is also in that area. I'm sure you already know that, I hope. They, uh, <laughs> they actually challenged them to find different ways that they can like reuse all their byproducts. Which we know a lot of breweries are doing that, you know, donating spent grain to farmers. It'd be nice like to find a way to take your spent grain and turn it into energy. Yeah. Like a green energy source. Well, it's not going to be green because probably burn it. Yeah. <laughs> but they're polluting them. But it'd be sick to find a way to do that. Steam engine, bring them back. <laughs> bring them back. Bring them back. Come on, let's go back to the 20s where things were a lot more simpler and I didn't have to wear a mask to the brewery, right? <laughs> right? The Roaring Twenties. All right, what do we have? All right, 5.5%. It's a pale ale. Not going to be overly bitter. Mm -hmm. It should be very mellow. Um, 
It actually says they use like four different hops in here, which is kind of weird for pale. I normally get like one or two. And then they use, they kind of bank on the London 3 yeast for the haziness of this. Okay. So, um, the hops, let me refer to my notes real quick. Idaho 7, Citra, Mosaic, and Centennial. So, okay. it should be, like that's, I've had beers with that exact combination and they've been great. So, I'm ready to get into it. You're gonna have a lot of like citrusy notes into it and smells and aromas. And it smells very juicy. I was gonna say juicy, juicy, tropical, citrusy. Like it's gonna be awesome on the tongue. I guarantee you. Well, let's do Oh yeah. thanks. Yeah, thanks. My bad. Chopped liver over here, apparently. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Let's give her the beans. Just smell good. Get off. Get off my D. <laughs> so it's a yeah, lot that's more. Like really good. It's a that's lot more cool. mellow than what I was anticipating. A lot bitter again. It's, it's mellow through and through. Yeah. But you get that citrusy. Well, the more I let it sit, I get a little bit around my tongue of the bitterness. Yeah. But it's not bad. So I'm gonna say probably intermediate for this bad boy, like just because it is, it does have that bitter again. Mm -hmm. More than the last one that we've done. Like, it's got some bittering to it. A lot more than those. Yeah, we recently just did uh, Abel Seedhouse's Modern Chemistry, which is also a hazy pale ale. Yeah, and this it, one has a little bit more bitter. It's it's definitely more bitter, especially the more that I drink it. Yeah. Um, But it's not as juicy. But that's, I mean, the hops are completely different from that beer as well. Yeah, that one only had two. It had... Um, it was like Montuic, Mon yeah, New Zealand, Montuica, 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 I think it was, and American Azaka, isn't that like it? Yeah, I've had like straight Azaka beers, and that that hop profile is just weird for me. I don't, I don't know why. It's different. The one that stands out is the Azaka craze from uh, Anapi, Anapi Brewing. We've done that review too. Go check that, that one. Out. That that hop profile, I just don't know what it is. Like it's different to me. It's, it's confusing. Yeah. Because it's, and when you put it, when you have it alone in a beer, it's, you, I'm like, this is like something I've never had before. Yeah. It is. But. I don't mind the bitterness because it kind of reminds me of an IPA. <clears throat> yeah. And it's, you know. That's what I'm saying, like, without, intermediate, like, without this would be a good, i put them in order. I'd go the, the last one we reviewed with the, the, from Able House. From Able House. Chemistry. And then this would be the next level to get to an IPA. An IPA. Like, this is probably a step down from what your basic IPA is going to be. Yeah. Probably wouldn't get... I wouldn't even say you're going to go from this to, uh... What's the one? Sierra Nevada's. You're not going to do that. No. Because you're going to need something a little less bitter. So, man. i, I got to say intermediate, yeah? Mm-hmm. You agree? Yeah. Straight down the middle. Like, it's, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. Not a beginner, all. no. Because they're going to get turned off just by the citrusy hops. If you are you smell it. a big IPA fan like both of us are, and you're looking for something a little more mellow that's just not Something like, to drink throughout the day. Yeah, where you're not like, oh my god, this is just too much. This is perfect. It's a 5.5. .5. Like it's, you could drink them for a while without getting hammered. Right. You know, like we've been drinking a lot of doubles in like New England's and just things that are like 70%. It's like, dude. Wasted. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, look at us yesterday. We passed out pretty early last night. I think we were done at 10. Yeah. We were like, <laughs> man, the count. We didn't even feel drunk. It was just, wow, we, this is catching up with us. We just got tired before we got drunk. That gorilla <laughs> juice got us, man. It was a 16.5% stout. Do killer. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. I'm definitely buying it again. Yeah, it's good. I know we don't usually. Uh, say good or bad things about breweries that we review because we try to give it straight but and neutral i haven't had anything that hat faker puts out that was bad they every beer i've had from them has been fantastic and this is my first one <laughs> well actually no i think you had the the, the reaper. reaper the reaper's good the original reaper yeah the original reaper is great all right ladies and gentlemen keep her tuned mm -hmm.